Hey there, buckaroos. It's time for another Vet Med Academy adventure in zoonoses. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at toxoplasmosis. Toxoplasmosis is a zoonotic disease that has been identified worldwide. It is caused by the protozoal parasite Toxoplasma gondii. We'll call it toxo from now on. Although T. gondii infects most species, domestic and wild cats constitute the only definitive host, and as such, they can serve as a main reservoir for infection. There are three infectious stages of T. gondii. Tachyzoites, a rapidly multiplying form, bradyzoites, a tissue cyst form, and sporozoites, which exist in oocysts. More on the life cycle later, but what clinical problems does toxoplasmosis cause? Tachyzoites lead to tissue damage, and the immune system plays an important role in limiting an infection. So, in adult immunocompetent animals, toxo is usually a subclinical illness. But the story can be quite different in the young, where systemically distributed tachyzoites can cause damage to the lungs, heart, skeletal muscle, liver, meninges, retina, and lymph nodes in young puppies, kittens, and piglets. Associated clinical signs include fever, diarrhea, cough, dyspnea, icterus, seizures, and death. Toxo can also cause abortion and stillbirth in sheep and goats, and sometimes in pigs. Tachyzoites may also spread to the fetus, causing multiple organ necrosis. Immune-suppressed adults, for example a cat with feline immunodeficiency virus, can develop generalized disease. How is toxo transmitted? In order to understand the presentation of this disease, it's time that we talk about the life cycle. Transmission of infectious oocysts can occur through consumption of cat feces or infected meat and by transplacental transfer of tachyzoites from mother to fetus. How does toxo get into a cat, the definitive host? Cats will ingest uncooked meat containing tissue oocysts. Bradyzoites are then released after digestion in the stomach and small intestine. They invade the intestinal epithelium and undergo sexual replication. Oocysts are then released in the feces by three days after infection and may be released for as long as three weeks. Oocysts sporulate outside the cat within one to five days and remain viable in the environment for several months. What happens in other animals and people? After consumption of tissue cysts in uncooked meat by a carnivore or consumption with food or drink by other warm-blooded mammals, Released bradyzoites and sporozoites infect and replicate in the intestinal epithelium. After several rounds of replication, tachyzoites emerge and can be spread via blood and lymph. What makes tachyzoites so destructive is that they replicate intracellularly, leading to cell rupture and tissue necrosis. If an animal is young or immunosuppressed, this damage may lead to death. Immunocompetent animals use cell-mediated immunity to manage the infection, leading to the bradyzoite stage, or tissue cysts, which may remain viable for years. At 70 microns, these cysts can be seen with a light microscope. The clinical signs of toxo are not particularly specific to the disease, so a definitive diagnosis of toxo generally requires serologic or histologic methods. Immunological techniques in a living animal include indirect hemagglutination assay, indirect fluorescent antibody assay, latex agglutination test, or ELISA. Increased IgM titers are consistent with recent infection, generally less than three months. However, IgG appears after a month of infection and by the fourth week after infection and may show positive titers for years during a subclinical infection. If an animal presents with clinical disease, as with many infectious diseases, paired IgG titers three to four weeks apart are recommended, with a fourfold or more increase in titer confirming infection. Another pre-mortem technique is to look for tachyzoites, or IgG, in the cerebrospinal fluid or aqueous humor. 
To confirm toxo in an animal after death, tachyzoites may be shown with impression smears. And microscopic examination of tissue may reveal the presence of tachyzoites or bradyzoites. The biggest issue is differentiating sarcocystis and neospora species from toxoplasma, but generally immunological and molecular genetic techniques are required to make this distinction. Generally, animals are not treated for toxo, but in dogs and cats, clindamycin for two to three weeks is the drug of choice. For human patients, a common recommendation is sulfadiazine, pyrimethamine. However, these drugs are active during parasite replication and do not eliminate the infection. Difficult cases might also be managed with azithromycin, clarithromycin, dapsone, diaminodiphenylsulfone, atavaquan, or spiromycin. There is no vaccine for toxo in humans or animals. Obviously, as a zoonosis, it is a disease best avoided. But in some parts of the world, this seems quite difficult, as many as 60% of the human population has positive IgG titers. Where the concern really lies is with immunosuppressed individuals, as reduction of immunity can lead to the release of tachyzoites from tissue cysts. If such cysts are in the brain, meningoencephalitis can occur. If a similar process occurs in a pregnant woman, tachyzoites can move across the placenta and cause birth defects in the baby. To an uninfected individual, exposure to toxo may occur through eating undercooked meat or anything containing oocysts from cat feces. Prevention of infection, then, is best addressed by washing hands and all utensils with soap and water after handling meat. Toxo is killed by soap and water, extreme cold, lower than negative 13 degrees centigrade or 9 degrees Fahrenheit, or heat, higher than 67 degrees centigrade, 153 degrees Fahrenheit. But generally, all meat should be cooked through to greater than this temperature before tasting or eating. As a general precaution, pregnant women should just avoid all cat litter, soil, and raw meat. Feeding indoor pet cats only commercial or cooked food will also reduce their tendency to become infected. Although a cat may shed infective oocyst only two to three weeks of its life after its initial infection, it is best practice to have a non-pregnant person empty a litter box daily. When gardening, wear gloves and wash vegetables before eating in the event that they may have been contaminated by cat feces. Toxoplasmosis is a zoonotic disease that can occur in all warm-blooded animals and is spread through ingestion of uncooked meat or through fecal contamination containing oocysts. The young and developing animal or person, or those who are immunosuppressed, are at the greatest risk. Prevention is generally addressed by good general and food hygiene, particularly around the presence of the definitive host, the cat.